Yeah, 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 man, it's going down. It's Danny Houston Podcast. I am Danny Houston. Check it out, man. We uh we got a real special guest today, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, H Town legend. You know what I'm saying? Been doing this thing, man. I'm talking about coming from the Christian side of things. And he hit us over the head with that pop in my trunk. You know what I'm saying? Been responsible for a few other things we'll get into later on, man. But listen, today's guest, man. You might know him as New Wine. You might have heard of him as Wino. But he goes by Hefe Wine today. What's going on, man? What's up, man? You speaking the history, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. Some people just know me, like you say, by New Wine. Some people just know me by Wino. And some people only know me by Hefe Wine. But I own all those monikers. You know. Is it like a Pimp C thing, like personalities? Or is this just you going through life and evolving and this is where you at? You know what I'm it's saying? A, it's evolving. It's growth. You know, because how I even got into the Christian hip hop, number one, I ain't even know what that was because I came out of the streets. I was facing 15 years in prison. Judge didn't even give me a bond like they was trying to get rid of me. This was 15 for what? What, what was the uh, charges? Oh, man, that was based on. Um, Cause you was I, in a car theft finale, right? Yeah, I, I had a car theft ring, though. Like I had a I had a warehouse, all kind of stuff. Oh no shit. Like chop so, shop all that type of Yeah, the real traditional chop shop. Uh and it went on for a long time from the age of fourteen to eighteen. And the reason why I was so successful, I had a uh a liaison, a redneck out of Porter, Texas. And he had a connect where we sold the car parts back to General Motors. So the only thing we would steal is General Motor cars. So it was. Oh, y'all getting some money then? Oh yeah, I was making that bread, young, making that bread, man, and uh, all my partners were slanging dope. And I tried. I sold dope one time, man, and we <laughs> got chased by the cops. I said, you know what? It's too much activity. <laughs> too much activity. It take too long. You know what I'm saying? It's t it's too many guns that can come out. I'd rather something that you know I can be slick at, and just get to it. And I was approached by. I think I had stole some stuff and I showed up at this hug cap place. They used to have hug, actual hug cap places where people would bring hug caps mm -hmm. and sell them back in the day. And I was approached by this this redneck with a big old stomach. He was skinny with a huge stomach. This like you was a crazy. kid though, 14 years old. Yeah, around it. Yeah. I was around 13 when I met him though. And he was like, man, if you can bring me this or bring me that, I'll pay you some decent money. You know he was a man of his word, hmm. so I, I cranked it up, bro. What is, what is he asking you for? At the time, I think he was asking for like Chevrolet and GMC truck tailgates. They probably still steal them tailgates to this day, snatch them off the cars or whatever. Hmm. Just just the actual gate. Yeah. No shit. I was getting seventy five dollars back then per gate, so we was man knocking them off <laughs> back to back. So <laughs> that's how all of that started. My partners who was selling dope. At first, I didn't tell them what I was doing. They were like, "Man, where you moving this at? What, what you, what's your connect?" <laughs> like they didn't know what I, I was getting money. But uh, I kept it real, real, real quiet, real quiet, man. And I was always a person that, uh, no matter what I did, I wanted to perfect it. You know. Uh, and my mama said I was a little mastermind. I, was, I didn't even know what that was back then. She used to call me a little mastermind. I guess because I would be so... Scheming. Try to figure something yeah, out. Yeah. 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 Well, I start... How I first started making money, I would, like, fix little radios and stuff like that when I was eight years old. and Fix people TVs. I figured that junk out early. Hmm. Like, we... Like, I don't even know how I knew it because, you know, it ain't no YouTube to teach you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, it's real trial and error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. trial and error. I'd have been shocked. <laughs> I tell my kids, I'd have been electrocuted so many times just, just trying to learn how components work. And uh, I just, man, I was that experimental type. You know, to this day, I invent things. You know, I got patents on stuff, all kinds of stuff. People wouldn't know I'm an inventor, you know, just by, you know, uh, them just thinking I'm a rapper or maybe a producer, but I'm much more than that. You feel me? Uh, when, and this is uh this is coming up in fifth war yeah but but in this time though because i mean i'm just trying to guess era rise like you seeing like kind of like to start a rap a lot now that type of stuff mid 80s uh and the 90s yeah yep uh jay prince 
lived one street over. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, okay, you got you can't just say that. You got to tell me what you know. What I'm saying how I just living one street over from Jake Prince. I man, there. just the just the the stuff you would hear, and you know the the streets would put put gas to it and things of that nature. But as I've grown and known through the years, man, I understand and I have a high level of respect. Some people have fear and respect, but I see them much deeper. And uh, just bringing them up, I just want to talk about this because nobody really talks about this with Jay Prince. Jay Prince, like just as a friend, he stopped some wars that could have been bad. Like, I've seen him help people and dudes finna go to war and finna kill each other and he would get in the middle of it and stop it. You feel what I'm saying? And not, it was no money involved, no nothing. Out of his busy schedule, out of his grind, all the vastest amount of companies he owned, go way out his way to stop two, two black brothers from fighting each other. So when, or killing each other, so with the Drake and the and the Kanye, I I know that firsthand. Hmm. You know, it was a misunderstanding between me and Trey back in the day, and his anger was, as I look back in retrospect, his anger was understood, because he had a song that was growing and building when Pop My Trunk just dropped, and kind of derailed what he had going on, but what he didn't know. Is that I had produced a song a year ago. My wife telling me to take my gum out of my mouth. She the only one who can talk to me like that, by the way. You don't mind, I put it right here. Let me give you. There you go. But uh, Trey didn't know I produced that song a year earlier than that, and it was for Mike Jones. When he fucked me, and what he was hearing was a demo. Because I was going to sell it to another artist. And it had Paul Wild on it, but it felt like I was just, you know, I took his idea and went with it. So before me and him could have a discussion about it, things got out of hand. And Jay didn't want to see two good brothers, you know, go at it. See, people misconstrued me because they knew me as a Christian hip-hop artist. They don't know me from the streets. And... That was the blessing. It was good I came over to that Christian side or that I was doing rap because the dude I was in the streets, I was, you know, I was out of control. And Jay actually called a meeting and had us both sit down and discuss our differences. And it was squashed. And me and Trey been cool ever since. Hmm. And and then another instant with the uh the Iggy Azalea situation. People didn't know, you know, T.I., you know, got offended by some stuff. And I could I could have took offense, but uh, things got out of hand where, you know, I thought something was finna come my way. And then it was finna get real tragic. And Jay again, here we go again. Oh, he came in the, in the midst of that situation. Yes, he did. Is he, I, I, I know him as a, a as a wise businessman and a peacemaker. So when I hear anything else, I don't even care about it. I know him personally, you know, and that's what happens. That's what happens with me. You've probably heard stuff about me, but people don't, they don't really know the person if they don't know the person. It's people judging from a distance and taking hearsays. You feel me? It's just Jay ain't finna sit up and, defend all of that. He just gonna be himself. Y'all say whatever. You know. And uh yeah man, it was just a just a strong dude. And he he has a gift I've never had. And the gift that I see real strong on him is how how to talk to anybody. Like anybody. Like not only that, but he know how to bring people together. Like like none other. You know, that's a strong gift, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, he's, I mean, he the GOAT, man. You know what I'm saying? He, he is the he GOAT. He is the GOAT. It is he what is it is. He is the GOAT. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.